for all of you out there that use Prismacolor pencil crayons, I'm sure you'll feel sympathetic with me about my white pencil crayon. I have fixed it by putting tape on the end, but it does still move around, so it makes it really hard to sharpen. But I just wanted to leave this in here so you could all um, lament with me about Prismacolor. So we're starting off by putting in some of the whiskers with the wax-based pencil crayon, just to make sure that the water doesn't get into those parts on the paper and I can keep those whiskers white. Next, I'm doing the black color of the cat's fur by just, well, I started with putting in a layer of clear water and then I dabbed in a whole bunch of different colors on top to make a really nice blended wet into wet um, mixture. And I wanted to make it look like a galaxy, so I had shaved some of the orange color on top, but I didn't really like how that looked in the end, so I just went over top with other colors. And for the background, I continued with the wet into wet, so I just did the, or I put water over the whole back part of the, or where the screen is showing, and then dabbed in some watered down versions of those colors just to make them really, really soft. Um, and as you can see, they, they've blended really nicely. I really love the wet into wet look for doing blurry backgrounds. It's so easy, it takes so little time, especially cons compared to print pencil crayon, but anyway. So continuing on, just doing the background here. I continued to do the wet into wet just to make sure that the color uh, blends really smoothly. I find that if I just, um, if I put wet paint onto the dry paper, I'll end up with little lines or like it won't look as smooth. So I've been trying out the wet into wet method just for getting a really nice smooth color over large areas and I find it's been really really helping. So once again, clear water first over the white fur and then I'm adding in a very watered down muted blue color that I mixed from the, the light blue and the orange color in the tray. And I'm just going for um, very loose detail. So I'm trying to pick out clumps of fur, not every single individual strand, because otherwise I would end up making the fur look too dark and too wiry. So I'm just going for clumps of fur and adding in some black into the ear and the eye. And I'm using the black pencil or the black ink tense pencil to bring out some of the details in the fur. Now, I wanted to keep a lot of the the color that I had laid down first. So, it was a bit of a challenge trying to decide where to put detail and where to leave it out and let the color show through. I think I was mostly successful, but it's it's quite difficult to make that kind of a decision when the random mix of colors are not in your original reference photo. So I added in some cars in the background, and then I just used the, the towel to dab off the color to keep it nice and blurry. For the screen, I tried using that clear plastic thing to do the straight lines, but whenever I moved it, it ended up, ended up smearing the lines. So I had to go freehand for the rest of them and then just go over with a quick glaze of a very, very pale blue just to kind of fuzz up those lines a bit and make them not so apparent. And then for the water droplets, I dabbed on a very transparent version of the dark blue color and dabbed off extra pigment by just dabbing like a, a dry brush over top. And then I went over with white for the bottom of the water droplets and a dark blue on top. 
And lastly, I'm picking out some of the little white hairs with the ink tents instead of the white jelly roll pen as you've seen me use before. It turns out you can just use the ink tents. It shows up really nicely on dark colors. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this ink tents demonstration and we'll see you next time.